Hello and today we are with Carrier Landings Pro. We are going to use a C2A Greyhound for a short flight to demonstrate takeoff and landing. Carrier Landings has many options for many interesting aircraft. These are some of the aircraft with the classic A10 Thunderbird. Today we will be using the propeller driven aircraft which is easier to fly and demonstrate takeoff and landing. So we are doing a flight simulator, go to my settings, set the wind, so I have around 6 knots of wind speed, clear sky and all other settings, time can be changed once you're running the program. The flight plan is basically a short flight, we take off from San Jose Mineta Airport and land at San Francisco International Airport, a straight flight. Confirm this and we go to flight plan. So you have your wind speed at 6 knots, sky clear, and you start. Then it prompts you for simulation or complete mode. So simulation means all the parameters will be active. Complete means all your aircraft controls will be visible. You have to start. So we are now at night, but I will increase, day, change the time to day. So everything comes clear. Okay, we have it. The different views you cycle through. The color view, the rear view, the tail cam, the follow on view, and the pilot's view. Okay, let's take off, let's focus on this view so I can show you the flight settings. So we'll set up the flaps for two. Okay. And you can see your alignment here. Line to runway. Okay, we are aligned to runway and we set up the flaps. I think we can take off now. So I'm going to increase the throttle and maintain my alignment to the runway okay, by using my keys. So okay, so now we take off speed set. Okay. Wait to rotate, wait to rotate. We've got a slight crosswind, so we are going to have, okay, taking off, it's rotating. So there'll be some slight moving away from alignment on takeoff. Your landing gear should be up now. We've got a positive rate of climb, and we're going to slowly ease out the flaps, but not too soon, or else you will stall. Okay, now our heading. We have to follow the heading too and see the takeoff. I can take off very nicely there. And I'm going to show you my heading on the map. So I have to bank and turn. Okay, so I'm going to bank with the flap still set at zero. So banking, so when you bank, ensure that you have a change in speed. Increase your throttle slightly. Oops, that was a bit of extra. So can yeah, we have my yes. heading set. Okay. Set. We're twenty seven point three. The distance to KSFO is twenty six point five nautical miles. You can either stay with me or skip to the end of the video for the landing part. We're going to climb up to around 20,000 feet. I'm 
I'm going to demonstrate a stall procedure. So I'm going to go up to 20,000 feet, straight climb up to 20,000 feet, and I'll demonstrate stall at 20,000 feet. Okay, approaching 20,000 feet. Okay, okay, that should be done. So let me demonstrate a stall. So I'm going to align the wings, bring the wings level up. So leveling the wings now. Okay. And I'm going to reduce my speed. Level wings, this speed. Okay. Let's wait for the stall. So the stall is occurs when you have no lift, or the forward momentum of the aircraft is not sufficient to maintain essential lift. So let's see what happens when we stall. When we know a stall speed. So the stall speed is very useful when you go in for landing because the final approach when we land and we basically reduce the speed until the aircraft stalls before it touches down on the runway. Okay, so this is uh, the stall speed of this aircraft, A or B or R. So approaching the stall speed maybe. The stall speed is also determined by other factors such as the headwind. We are 20,000 feet safe enough to recover from stall. We are approaching 120 knots. Still no stall. So the aircraft appears to be descending slightly. I'm going to put the nose up. Okay, there you got stall. And now to recover from stall, you straight away point the nose down. Total full. And you're going to recover soon, yes, 180 knots, and you recovered from the stall, so you still had about 17,000 feet to recover. Okay. This is assuming that your engines are all powered up. In case you have an engine failure, stall recovery will be more challenging. So you can see our KSF airport runway is lined up on this compass rose. We're going in for so, so we set up the speed. So uh, I'm around 15 nautical miles away. The airport runway is not visible except with my compass rose. You can see the other airports around as well. As well, you can see KOAK is Oakland. And for flight simulators, this is a very good place in which to fly as you have multiple airports which you can access within a very short distance. Okay, so we are going to go back to our KSF. San Francisco. Okay, there we have it. If you can look over the aircraft's nose, you will see the indicator. So I am landing without any instruments. I'm going to use purely visual flight rules VFR. Okay. So we are around 10 nautical miles away. I'm going to reduce speed and I'm going to deploy the flaps to one. Okay, flaps to one. We're going to start descending. So I'm around 10,000 feet. Reducing speed some more. We're around 200. 200. You can deploy the air brakes. Okay, let me try and deploy the landing gear to reduce speed. So the landing gear is now being deployed. There you can see the landing gear deployed. Okay, so we increase the speed slightly. We need the view of the pilot so you get a better view. Consider runway alignment. So we have runway alignment. So I'm going to increase the flap to two. Okay. Landing purely with visual flight rules. Okay. Use speed some more. Left speed to compensate. Okay. And choose any one of the runways. So it says cleared for landing. We got five nautical miles. Reduce the speed a little bit more, not. And now I'm going to go into full flaps and approach. 
uh, when this happens you'll get more lift because your flaps are fully deployed but your speed may decrease significantly so you'll have to basically play with the throttle and remember that with propeller based aircraft you'll have a spooling which means that you won't get an instant response of the engine and so you have to anticipate the speed we have about 170 one knots we should have around a stall at around 110 knots so i'll aim for that stall speed okay so we still have alignment now approach to k s f o is a little bit challenging because you can see you have two runways and plus two taxiways so this can be if you're landing with vfr you can end up with this orientation and then you go down 170 knots descending you've got 76 feet you going to aim for that runway so you're going to aim for that runway we are still not aligned let me ascend okay so yeah 161 knots i'm going to aim for the runway okay that's going for a gentle reduce uh, speed so maintain some momentum and reduce speed now okay fso has a relatively long runway so you can so you have permitted some form of error because the runway is sufficiently long to ensure that you don't make mistakes so it's a good flight for a beginner Okay, so we're going in down, stalling and stalling, and I tip the nose up and retard, 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 and reduce speed. Okay, um, okay touch down, brakes, okay, and then you reduce speed. Now with flight simulators, you don't necessarily have the option of air brakes and brakes. So when you deploy, you usually have the... thrusters coming in first and then the brakes okay let's do a short replay of this so i'm going to replay this so you can see with carrier landings flow usually get a replay of everything including the views so you can scroll through your replay so you can see all the cameras so let's look at it from the perspective of the engine so carrier landings pro is a very good flight simulator because you can view the aircraft from different perspectives even when landing you see not a perfect landing but it has been done without any kind of vfr with a slight crosswind okay so that's about it thank you very much for watching